So this video is to supplement the asexual sexual reproduction lesson just in case there's too much information for you or you don't understand some aspects of it. So I'll just go through it. So this is additional information than what you actually need to know for your exam. It's there for your interest and it's just there to give you a bit of an explanation. But what you need to know about asexual reproduction is that it only involves one parent. You also need to know that when organisms reproduce asexually, you get two identical offspring. So they are genetically identical. There is no variation whatsoever. Now, the benefits of doing um, reproduction this way is that it's energy efficient because it's much quicker because you don't have to find a mate. It also means that offspring can produce, be produced in large quantities. So we can make use of this in science and technology by using this to replicate plants. But what happens is, and an example of it is binary fission. So in binary fission, the DNA copies itself. So it makes an identical copy of itself. And then all of the organelles and cytoplasm are copied as well. And they split in equal proportions and then it kind of gets an indent here and it gradually splits into two new cells and they are identical copies and bacteria reproduce by binary fission. In sexual reproduction, in contrast to asexual, there are two parents involved. So you know that in males, male parents produce sperm cells and you know that female parents produce egg cells and that this diagram here is showing you that what happens when the sperm and egg come together and that's called fertilisation. And at fertilisation, the nuclei of the sperm and egg fuse, which means that they join together. There's a little summary of it here. So the nuclei fuse and the chromosome number is restored. So this the egg cell has 23 chromosomes and the sperm cell has 23 chromosomes. And when those nuclei fuse, they fuse to form 46 chromosomes, which is what we mean by the chromosome number is restored. So if you restore a building or a painting, you put it back to its original. So what body cells should have in them are 46. So when the two sex cells come together at fertilisation, it restores the chromosome number. So sexual reproduction involves two parents. And the main advantage of this is that you get genetic variation. So it produces variation in the offspring. And what that means is if the environment changes in any way and that's um, a disadvantage to one kind of organism, it's not going to wipe out all of them because there is variation and differences within them. But it is more time consuming because you have to find a mate to reproduce with. And often the offspring produced are not produced quickly and it, the gestation period is much bigger. There are some exceptions to the rule that you need to know about. So there are some plants like strawberry plants and spider plants that produce, uh, reproduce asexually. I don't know why I'm giving spider two Ds. Um, spider plants and they reproduce asexually by producing runners. They can reproduce sexually as well. So what happens is they grow a an elongated stem and that has a little plant on the end of it and that plant will be an identical copy to the parent plant and then it grows on this long stem because the idea is it for it to deposit it somewhere further away so that it's not taking all of its resources and then that little plant then when it gets deposited grows its own little roots and then the runner decomposes and then you have two identical copies. So um, another thing that happens is daffodils. Daffodils reproduce asexually, but they produce bulbs, which we plant. And humans can cut the bulbs in half and plant them separately. And that would result in two identical daffodils. There's lots of fungi that reproduce asexually, but also reproduce sexually. So they can do both. And... Plants can reproduce, so it talks about bulb division here, such as um, 
daffodils and then runners such as strawberry plants and I think brambles um, are runners as well. And then there's another example that you need to know. So in B3, you encounter the protist, which is a type of microorganism, and it's called malaria. And you should have heard of malaria. It's a disease that affects people. And its vector that passes it on is a mosquito. So that's what this is here, a mosquito. Now, in humans, when a human has malaria, the malarial parasite actually reproduces asexually. So asexually in humans. But when malaria is within the mosquito, it produces, it reproduces sexually. So there's variation. So that can also do both.